Chicago Bulls fans, I'm here for you. And I'm going to try my damnedest to try to look at the outlook of this team right now and steer it in a positive direction of how these guys could build up something good here. But I'm not going to lie to you, it's going to be a little difficult because the first thing you look for when you're a bad team is young players who you can be really excited about. I mean, they just traded for Chris Dunn, who's going to be their starting point guard, I assume. I mean, even if Dunn can step up and just improve on last season, how much better is he really going to be, or how good will he really be? Because his rookie season was almost as weak as you can ask for, for a guy playing 17 minutes a game. He didn't shoot well from the field, he didn't shoot well from three, he didn't make his free throws... He averaged almost as many turnovers as assists. And he was playing pretty consistently throughout the entire season. Now that's not to say that he's done. It's not to say that there's a pun in there. Whatever. I'm just saying, based on his first year, what are the expectations for this guy at this point? I feel like NBA fans sometimes have this tendency to go, well, the guy's young, so that absolves any criticism you can throw at him. I don't agree with that. I think young age just means he might have some time, but you can't act like all the things that a guy sucks at are just going to go away. So, I'm not too hopeful on Chris Dunn. I'm going to say this. If Chris Dunn grows into a quality starting point guard this season, I'm going to be surprised. Does that mean I think he's like hopeless for his career? No, I think he can still be alright. Uh, if we go to Zach Levine, I mean, I like Levine as a scorer. The question is, can he really grow as a overall player? You know, I'll say like as a playmaker, he averaged about three assists a game this season. Well, here's what I'll say. I think Hoiberg is going to put the ball in his hands more often, more so than it was in Minnesota, where at times Wiggins would have the ball, sometimes Rubio would have the ball. Uh, Levine is going to have it a decent amount of the time, so we're going to find out pretty quickly if he can actually make plays for other guys and make his teammates better. And he's been a damn good offensive player in terms of three-pointers, shooting from the field. He's athletic, as we all know. Of course, the ACL injury, I mean, it's rough, and we don't know when he's going to start this season and if he's even going to be himself once he comes back. But given his free agency, which is about to be uh, restricted after this season, if Chicago wants him back, they can have him back. And I think they should, and I think they should see what they have in him. And I'm actually kind of hopeful that he can be at least a better um, facilitator for everyone else just because of more responsibility and having some decent ball handling abilities and Hoiberg trusting him. And if we're talking about Hoiberg, we can mention that he has always liked big guys who can shoot. The problem is the Bulls roster has never really had those type of guys. I mean, they had Miritich, but Miritich didn't make his three-pointers this previous season. Now you have Lowry Markkinen, who... I actually think has quite a bit of potential as an offensive player in the NBA. Someone who can grow into a three-point shooter and have some ball handling abilities. I could see, even in his rookie season, honestly, I could see him putting up a decent amount of points just because who the hell else is going to do it on this team, especially with Zach Levine being out to start the year. I mean, just go down the team. You're going to have, like, Dwayne Wade taking some shots, and then after that, Markinen, you got the green light, man. Start hoisting him up. I mean, I think Hoiberg is going to be running him off ball, where like he'll set a screen for a perimeter player, and then he'll immediately step out and hopefully be open because in that little moment of the defender for uh, Markinen realizing what he's got to do on the screen, perhaps Lowry can step out and shoot a three-pointer. Pick and pops, although... Chris Dunn's jumper is going to have to be something that defenses are going to have to respect or else Markinen's never going to get too many opportunities on screen and rolls with him. Maybe Cameron Payne steps up. Maybe Jerry and Grant steps up at the point guard position. I'm not really hopeful about any of those things happening. But I do like Markinen and I, I think he can be a source of offense as well as some excitement for the Bulls this season. They have all of their own draft picks moving forward. So that's good. They did, of course, trade one of their picks that they just recently had in the Jimmy Butler move, which was awful. 
if you're going to trade away your star player, you probably shouldn't give up a first round pick while you're doing that. But whatever, they are where they are now. Uh, an interesting thing could be Robin Lopez and his contract. It's kind of a rough one to move 13, 14 million dollars for the next two seasons. The only way you could really move that is probably through a first round pick, which I would not do. But the new thing that happens in the NBA now is one dude on a high salary will get traded for someone who's not as good and makes usually like half as much money. We just recently saw this with Alan Crabb and Andrew Nicholson. And even then, Nicholson actually makes less than half of what Crabb makes. So maybe something like that could be used for the Bulls. They have all their cap space, so a move like that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Perhaps some other team is looking for just a good center to hold on to for a couple of years, and the Bulls are just looking to cut some salary. That could give the opportunity for uh, Cristiano Felicio to get in there, who I like from a mobile standpoint. As far as how effective he can be on both sides of the floor and as a rebounder, we're still going to have to see. I actually think his rebounding is kind of intriguing, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, about five boards a game in 16 minutes. That's intriguing. I think that's room for growth, although he's about to be 25 years old, so who knows how much more actual improvement he has in him, but it's a thing. Honestly, if I was Chicago, I would start taking flyers on guys, you know, sign like KJ McDaniels, if some other guy is available who might not have worked out somewhere else, maybe you take him on and see what he can do. Things like that. They also are going to need some shooting, though, so maybe a guy like KJ wouldn't be great for them. Here's what I'll say about the Bulls. While it's not the best looking roster in the world, and while I do think they could potentially be the worst team in the NBA this season, they have all their picks moving forward. I don't think Hoiberg has ever gotten the roster that's really been the type of team for him, because in college he had a pick and roll heavy style offense with a lot of shooters. Of course, he hasn't really had a lot of shooters on his NBA teams. And um, they have all their first round picks, which I might have already said. And they have a crap ton of cap space, so there's that for you. It's the avenue for something good. My fear is that the Bulls front office is just not very good at actually acquiring the good players. But you do have Markkanen. I think he can be something. And we're just going to have to see what these guys moving forward.